is the relation given by the set of ordered pairs shown below a function. So before we even attempt to do this problem right here, let's just remind ourselves what a relation is and what type of relations can be functions. So in a relation, you have a set of numbers that you can kind of view as the input into the relation. We call that the domain. You could view them as the set of numbers over which that relation is defined. And then you have a set of numbers that can be, you could view it as the output of the relation, or what the numbers that can be associated with anything in domain. And we call that the range. And it's a fairly straightforward idea. So for example, let's say that the number one is in the domain. And that we associate the number one with the number two in the range. So in this type of notation, you would say that the relation has one comma two, one comma two in its in its set of ordered pairs. Th these are two ways of saying the same thing. Now the relation can also say, hey, maybe if I have two, maybe that is associated with two as well. So two is also associated with the number two. And so notice, I'm just building a bunch of associations. I've visually drawn them over here. Here I'm just doing them as ordered pairs. We could say that we have the number three. Three is in our domain. Our relation is defined for number three. And three is associated with, well, let's say, negative, negative seven. So this is three and negative seven. Now this type of relation right over here, where if you give me any member of the domain and I'm able to tell you exactly which member of the range is associated with it, this is also referred to as a function. And in, the in a few seconds I'll show you what a relation that is not a function. Because over here you pick any member of the domain and the function really is just a relation. It's really just an association, sometimes called a mapping, between members of the domain and particular members of the range. So you give me any member of the domain, I'll tell you exactly which member of the range it maps to. You give me one, I say, hey, it definitely maps to two. You give me two, it definitely maps to two as well. You give me three, it's definitely associated with negative seven as well. So this relation is both a, it's obviously a relation, but it is also a function. Now to show you a relation that is not a function, imagine something like this. So once again, I'll draw a domain over here. And I do this big fuzzy cloud looking thing to show you that I'm not showing you all of the things in the domain. I'm just picking specific examples. And let's say that this big fuzzy cloud looking thing is the range. And let's say in this relation, and I'll build it the same way that we built it over here. Let's say in this relation, one is associated with two. So let's build the set of ordered pairs. So one is associated with two. Let's say that two is associated with, let's say that two is associated with negative three. So you'd have two, negative three over there. And let's say on top of that, we also associate, we also associate one with the number four. So we also create an association with one with the number four. So we have the ordered pair one, comma, four. Now, this is a relationship. We have, it's defined for certain, if this was the whole relationship, then the entire domain is just the numbers one, two, actually just the numbers one and two. It's definitely a relation, but this is no longer a function. And the reason why it's no longer a function is, if you tell me, okay, I'm giving you one in the domain, what member of the range is one associated with it? Over here you say, well, I don't know. Is one associated with two or is it associated with four? It could be either one. So you don't have a clear association. If I give you one here, you're like, I don't know. Do I hand you a two or four? That's not what a function does. A, a function says, oh, if you give me one, I know I'm giving you a two. You give me a two, I know I'm giving you a two. Now with that out of the way, let's actually try to tackle the problem right over here. So let's think about its domain and let's think about its range. So the domain here, the possible the possible, you could view them as x values or inputs into this thing that could be a function, that's definitely a relation. You could have a negative three, you could have a negative two, you could have a zero, you could have a, well we already listed a negative two, so that's right over there. Or you could have a positive three or you could have a positive three. Those are the possible values that this relation is defined for, that you can input into this relation and figure out what it outputs. Now the range here, these are the possible outputs, or the numbers that are associated with the numbers in the domain. The range includes two, four, five, two, four, five, six, six, and eight. 
two, four, five, six, and eight. I could have drawn this with a big, you know, a, a cloud like this, and I could have done this with a cloud like this. But here we're showing the exact numbers in the domain in the range. And now, now let's draw the actual associations. So negative three is associated with two, or it's mapped to two. So negative three maps to two based on this ordered pair right over there. Then we have negative two is associated with four. So negative two is associated with four based on this ordered pair right over there. Actually, that first ordered pair, let me, that first ordered pair, I should, I don't want to get the get you confused. It should just be this ordered pair right over here. Negative three is associated with two. Then we have negative two. Let me do that in a different color. We have negative two is associated with four. Negative two is associated with four. We have zero is associated with five. Zero is associated with five. Or sometimes people say it's mapped to five. We have negative two is mapped to six. Now this is interesting. Negative two is already mapped to something, and it's now this this ordered pair is saying it's also mapped. It's also mapped to six. And then finally, finally, I'll do this in a color that I haven't used yet, although I've used almost all of them. We have three is mapped to eight. Three is mapped to eight. So the question here, is this a function? And for it to be a function, for any member of the domain, you have to know what it's going to map to. It can only map to one member of the range. So negative 3, if, if, you put, if you put negative 3 as the input into the function, you know it's going to output 2. If you put negative 2 into the input of the function, all of a sudden you get confused. Do I output 4 or do I output 6? So you don't know if you output 4 or you output 6. And because there's this confusion, this is not a function. You have, you have a member of the domain that maps to multiple members of the range. So this right over here is not a function. Not a function.